Hi everyone, I'm Erin and I'm going to be running your um, session today on using Hypothesis in Sakai or activating annotation in Sakai. We're going to get started as soon as everyone files in. You will notice that I have made you all panelists. That's because uh, you will have the opportunity to ask questions and participate. For now, if you want to just keep yourself on mute, that is great. Uh, if you want to turn on your video today, that is also great. Entirely up to you. So we're going to give about one or two more minutes to get started uh, just to make sure everyone is able to access the webinar and get into what they need. One of the things we are going to do today while we're waiting to start is I am going to walk you through adding a hypothesis enabled reading to your Sakai course. So when we get to that point, if you want to follow along in your own Sakai course, uh, that might be helpful. And so you might want to have your own Sakai instance pulled up um, as well. We're going to give it 30 more seconds before we officially start. I did put the link to today's slides in the chat, and so you are free to use those slides. I'm going to be referencing some resources that are in those slides, and you might need them for later access. So feel free to grab them if you want to. So it's three past the top of the hour. Let's go ahead and start. My name is, <laughs> excuse me, whoa. My name is Erin and I'm a customer success specialist at Hypothesis. You are in activating annotation in Sakai. If you're like, oops, wrong webinar, now might be the time to exit and try the webinar you actually intended to be in. But today we are talking about using Hypothesis in Sakai. A uh, little bit of background, I am a former middle school teacher. I taught middle school for 10 years before I transitioned to higher ed as an education professor in Western Colorado. And I can tell you that uh, teaching middle school is not so different from teaching undergrads um, in teacher education. So uh, additionally, I come at you from Western Colorado. If you are familiar with the Aspen area, I'm about 30 minutes west of Aspen. Joining me today is Becky. Becky, you want to wave? She is the other half of the customer success team here at Hypothesis, and she is going to be answering questions in the chat and hopping in as needed today. Here's what we're going to talk about. We are going to talk about what is Hypothesis. We're going to talk about how Hypothesis works. We will talk about how to use Hypothesis in Sakai, and I am going to walk you through how to add a Hypothesis enabled reading to your Sakai course. We're going to finish today with ideas for using Hypothesis in your courses. To start, if you can go over to the chat, tell us what school you teach at, what discipline you teach in, and your experience with Hypothesis. So tell us what school you're at, what you teach, and your experience with Hypothesis in the chat, and I'll give you about a minute to do that.
and make sure you post it to all panelists so we can all connect with each other. So far, we have a good representation from Duke and Roger Williams, Providence College. Excellent. Great. I don't know about you, Erin, but every time uh, instructors share what they what courses they teach, I always want to ask if I can join in their courses. Uh, so it's great. To, it's great to see the variety in here today. Um, and definitely some some instructors that I, I wish I could, I could hop into your classes and be a fly on a wall. <laughs> I agree. All right, this is great. Thank you so much for letting me know who you are. That definitely helps as I walk through today and give you some examples for using hypothesis in your courses. As a reminder, um, you do have access to all of the slides I'm showing you today, and those slides are going to have resources you may need as we go through. And I put that in the chat one more time. So now let's, oh, well, actually, let me back up. I see that some of you have experience with hypothesis already, so some of this might be a review. If it is, great. If you think of ideas to kind of go off what I'm saying about how you've used a hypothesis in your own courses, then please share it in the chat. We all want to know. Um, or you can even interrupt me and tell me as well. Take 20 seconds. Read the quote on your screen to yourself. For those of you who are new to hypothesis, you've probably have not seen this quote before. Those of you who've worked with us for a while, you're like, yeah, yeah, I know this. Um, this really gets at what the core of hypothesis is. Our goal is to take those digital texts that you share through Sakai with your students and use the margins of those texts for your students to collaborate and to socially annotate. Your students can see the comments and the annotations from other students in the class, as well as from you, and they get to learn from each other around that reading. You're gonna see some examples of that today. If you have never used Hypothesis before, and I know that's a certain, or a, a large percentage of you, and that's great. This is an example of a Hypothesis enabled reading that was launched through Sakai. So you have the reading right here. In this case, it is a poem by Edna St. Vincent Millay. And on the right side, you have the hypothesis annotation bar. So anytime you launch an assignment or a reading with hypothesis through Sakai, the annotation bar will appear on the reading. Students and you can now annotate specific text in the annotation bar. You'll notice that you can annotate with images. Um, you can also annotate with links. You can annotate with videos. And here you'll see that you can respond to each other's annotations. You'll see more examples of this. There's three things we think make up hypothesis. The first is that it makes reading active. I think it's really easy to assign text to our students to read and we assume that they're going to really love it, engage with it and be passionate about it. When in reality, they might be reading it at 11 o'clock the night before class and then sort of falling asleep, sort of reading it, maybe half watching um, Netflix in the background, right? We want our students to actively engage with the reading. By asking them to annotate with hypothesis, they have to think about what they're doing. They have to process what they're reading. Um, they can even ask questions about what they're reading as they're doing it. We hope that hypothesis makes reading active or visible, excuse me, I just said active, visible for you, the instructor. How do you know how well students read the text? How do you know what questions they had? How do you know where they are confused or where their understanding broke down? And the goal is that hypothesis can show that to you. Students are able to annotate their questions, their points of confusion, 
Um, they're even able to annotate connections that you as an instructor may not have thought of previously. And so if you can see that, you can now adapt your class to what students are able to do and what they understand. And lastly, and actually this is like the most important to me, is that it makes reading social. Students can collaborate over a reading. They're not necessarily reading in isolation. They can see how their peers felt about the reading and they can see their peers' ideas around it as well. And I think um, it can be very lonely reading a difficult text to yourself and wondering, am I the only one who's confused? To be able to see your peers' connections and ideas is powerful. So how do you annotate with Hypothesis? For those of you who are new, you just launch the reading or the assignment with Hypothesis enabled through Sakai. And then you choose the text you would like to annotate. And then you select either annotate or highlight. Highlights are automatically private. And so you as an instructor would not see what students just choose to highlight. However, if they choose annotate, you'll be able to see that. Once a student creates an annotation, any of those annotations can be replied to by you or other students. And so you can have these deeper level conversation threads directly um, or embedded next to the text. Couple of resources for you as you're working with Hypothesis or launching Hypothesis enabled readings in your courses. The first is the Annotation Etiquette Guide for Students. This is important. I think our students are really used to responding to things with good idea, or this seems nice, or I like this, or thumbs up. Those are nice social media responses, but they're not really qu um, quality annotations. So if you'd like to give your students some examples of substantive annotations, take a look at the Annotation Etiquette Guide for Students. You can annotate with images, videos, and links, which I referred to earlier. And so take a look at this resource uh, for each of those steps because they're all slightly different. Let's talk about Sakai. In Sakai, your hypothesis is already added to your Sakai instance. I think for everyone here in this session, because you're mostly at Providence, um, Duke, and Roger Williams, so you already have access to it. You don't have to take any special steps to add hypothesis to your Sakai instance. Students are already signed in. They don't have to create accounts and they're already part of your course. So you don't have to create a group for your course either. All annotations that students create are private to the course. Okay. Um, once you have launched an hypothesis enabled reading in Sakai, you can grade it directly in Sakai as well and it will feed your gradebook. So from the instructor view, you'll be able to see the grading bar at the top. You'll select each individual student, and then you'll be able to see that individual student's annotations. You can put the grade in directly in that top bar. I'm going to stop for a second and see if there are any questions. Becky's doing a great job answering in the chat. Um, I'll grab this one for you, Becky. Michelle, uh, it works with PDFs and publicly available websites which I will talk about in a second as well. So if after today you have more questions about how to use Hypothesis in Sakai specifically, we have these great uh, resources for you. The images that you're about to see about adding a Hypothesis assignment in Sakai, I actually grabbed from this resource right here using Hypothesis in Sakai lessons. So this is the point, if you want to open up your own Sakai instance and add, uh, or, oh, duh, sorry, let me back up a little bit. I've already been talking all day long at this point. If you want to open up your own Sakai instance and add a hypothesis enabled reading as I'm showing you how to do it, this might be a good time to split your screens between your Sakai um, page and then the page that I'm showing you on my screen or to put one on one screen and one on the other screen if you're working on two screens. Edgar, I'm just about to get to that. And 
Um, hopefully I say this correctly, Kearsley, I might be able to refer to that. Um, we can adjust that for sure though. So I'll give you a minute if you wanna pull up your own Sakai course and follow along as I show you how to add a hypothesis enabled reading. Let's do this. So the first thing to note about using Hypothesis in Sakai, this is super important. You have to have the lessons tool on your course site. Okay, so point number one, you must have the lessons tool on your course site in Sakai. This page here shows you how to add the lessons tool to your course site if it is not there already. I'm guessing that most of you already have lessons added, but just keep that in mind if you don't. Once you have uh, the lessons tool in your course, you're gonna go ahead and navigate to that lessons tool, and then you're gonna choose add content. So you choose lessons from the left side, and then add content. That should be like in that top um, horizontal bar. And Edgar, this is gonna get to what your question was. From add content, the key piece is you must add external tool. So that's the option you're gonna choose is add external tool. Then you may have lots of other external tools already in your Sakai. In this example, we only have hypothesis. So you'll only see hypothesis as an option on my page, but on yours, you might see more. You would choose hypothesis. So it's a bit of a like multi-step process. Add content, add external tool, choose hypothesis. And for all of you, it should already be in your Sakai so you don't have to add it outside of your course, I guess. It's gonna open up this um, text box that says tool title. This is where you're going to name your reading. So you might name your reading, I don't know, week one, reading three, or whatever you would like to title it. That's where you're gonna add your title. You do not yet need to add your document. Okay, you do not yet need to add your document. And then of course you're going to hit save. Once you hit save, it's gonna take you back to that lessons page. You now need to launch what you just saved. So click on what you just saved, whatever you named it. And this is where you're going to choose the reading that you would add. So the options for the types of documents that you can use for readings, you can use a publicly available website. This is a website that is not behind a username or password. I use the New York Times as an example because it's behind a paywall, you cannot use it as a web page. An example of a web page that you could use might be whitehouse.gov. I don't know what's on it today versus yesterday or the day before, but just know that that's <laughs> an example that is publicly available. The other option you have here is select a PDF from Google Drive. Do not panic. If you do not use Google Drive, if you select PDF from Google Drive, upload will appear as an option and you can upload a document from your device to hypothesis that way i'm going to stop for a second and see if there are questions thus far you can unmute if you would like to ask as well No questions? All right, perfect. That means you're all adding hypothesis enabled readings to your Sakai instance right now, feverishly, right? Everybody's already loaded 10 of them. Let's talk about OCR really quick in the context of PDFs. Every PDF you use uh, with hypothesis must have optical character recognition. 
Optical character recognition means that the text within the document is selectable and the system recognizes the text as text. If you had a favorite book that you love to teach and you like put it on the scanner and you sent it to your computer as a PDF, that document does not have optical character recognition. We have a tool here at Hypothesis that will add the OCR layer for you. So you don't have to stress about it. You don't have to like find somebody who has Acrobat Pro to do it for you. Check out that tool. It's linked on the slide deck. That's why I gave you guys the slide deck. Um, and just make sure every PDF you use with Hypothesis has OCR. On a soapbox, any PDF you add to Sakai should have OCR because it is not accessible for students who may use screen readers or text to audio or other devices. Um, for accessibility, that was a repetition of accessible. <laughs> I apologize for that. But you can use our OCR tool to OCR any PDF you want to add to Sakai even if you don't use that PDF with Hypothesis. To grade your student annotations in Sakai, I know this says D2L, but it's the same um, view, I guess. But to grade your student annotations in Sakai, you just select your student from the bar at the top, and then you, can, you will see just that student's annotations and you can give that student a grade directly to the gradebook. Questions about adding a hypothesis enabled assignment to Sakai about OCR. Um, I do see that Chris had a question about the Google Drive option. So Chris, if you only ha are logged in to your personal drive from your browser, that is the option it will choose. If you have another Google Drive that you use through work, you might want to log into that in the browser and it, that should appear as an option. I will say, Chris, um, the reason we use Google Drive is because we assign a URL to every document that you use with Hypothesis. Hypothesis does not host documents. We only host the annotations. Uh, and so there must be like a place where that document lives. Okay, I don't hear any questions. You can always unmute and ask. I promise to be nice. And we can all promise to be nice to anyone who asks a question, right? Let's talk about how to use hypothesis in your courses. Those of you who've used Hypothesis before through Sakai, I'd love to hear some of your ideas in the chat as we're kind of going through this. Um, I'm gonna throw ideas out there. If you think of a new idea, please throw that in the chat too. We'd love to hear it. So the first way to think about using social annotation and Hypothesis is to create community with your students. We know that if students do not feel emotionally and socially safe in a course or in a classroom, then their academic learning is going to shut down. So think about using Hypothesis as a way to increase that or to create that emotional and social safety for students. I actually work with a group of instructors the first week of class. They will post articles that pertain to the students' lives and then have the students annotate those articles to start, even if those articles are not necessarily related to the discipline. Because what it does, it's showing the students, hey, I'm not alone in this class. There are other students here who may share my ideas and I am free to post my ideas to everyone else. You can also annotate with images and GIFs and memes and instructors will often ask students to annotate with that as a way of showing their creativity or their cleverness um, or their sense of humor. This is a very popular one and there's quite a bit of research behind it, but asking students to annotate the syllabus. You can have students annotate what they already know, what they're looking forward to learning, questions they have about the syllabus, and if all else fails, it's a great way to prove that they actually read the syllabus. Making that reading active to you, the instructor. If you wanna take it a step further, you can even adapt your syllabus based on what students annotate really giving those students um, control over their own learning. 
You can enable annotation on your readings and see what happens. Do students annotate? What did they say? And what kind of connections do they create? Uh, I worked with, oh, I think it was anthropology a couple days ago, an anthropology professor, and she turned on annotations on every academic article she gave her students um, just to see if they would take notes for future research and what they discussed. And what she found is, even though she did not require annotations, the students wanted to participate in annotating with each other. Another idea here um, in terms of the social sciences and the ologies, I had a sociology professor who was doing qualitative interviews and she took the text of those interviews and turned on annotations with those, with those texts as a way to code the interviews. You can teach your students to read using social annotation. I have worked with several actually science instructors who will seed annotations prior to the students opening up the document saying, hey, pay attention to this section of the text. You'll really want to look for the evidence. Or they'll say in an annotation, this is less important and here's why. If you want to take it above and beyond and you have all the spare time in the world, which all of you do, right? Obviously. Uh, I've worked with an instructor who created how to read uh, videos within YouTube, like one to two minute videos, and then posted those in the annotations. And so students were able to click on the video with the instructor giving directions for the text itself. Using it for seminar style discussion, there's actually two ways to think about this. You can annotate synchronously in real time, whether you are in person in a class or online in a class. Not all of our students like to talk. So asking all students to participate in a verbal discussion, you're probably missing some of what other students might contribute. You could say, take 10 minutes of your class and have students annotate synchronously and have that take the place of a verbal discussion. Think about what kind of responses you might elicit from students you may not hear from in a verbal discussion. The other way to think about this is to ask students to annotate prior to class and then use annotations to inspire discussion. Um, I always say that I went through decades of undergrad and grad school and the heart palpitations that I feel in every class wondering if the instructor will call on me when I have not had a chance to vet my ideas with someone else it's the fear is real, right? Even if I did my work and I was prepared. So if students are able to annotate prior to a discussion to share their ideas with each other and to know that their ideas have already been presented to other students, they're more likely to participate in a discussion in class. Annotating your lecture notes. I love this one because it hits all the modes of learning. If you can ask your students to annotate the lecture prior to the lecture itself, and then listen to the lecture and then discuss the lecture, we've now hit the many modes of learning, right? Not all of them, but several. We've hit reading, writing, listening, and speaking. So think about how well your students might know the material if they're able to do all of that. Some other ideas out there. You can access images from museums around the world through the Google Arts and Culture page. You can have your students annotate with images from museums or from history from around the world using those images. You can have your students annotate with political cartoons from history. If any of you are math, using an OER math textbook and having students annotate the process of arriving at the solution to the problem that you've given them. Um, I've worked with some math instructors who are very adamant that math is about the process, not the solution. And so they're using social annotation and hypothesis to have students really dive deep into how they arrived at that solution and then having discussions about it in their class. You are all part of our partner program with hypothesis and you're all prestigious. So thanks for being prestigious and thanks for being our partner. We appreciate you. Because you are a partner with Hypothesis, we're going to um, elevate your support tickets to the top of the queue. So if you ever have any questions, we are happy to help. You can submit a support ticket directly to support at hypothesis.is. Your students can also submit a support ticket. And if they do that, we will try to CC you as much as possible. 
You are free to schedule time one-on-one -on -one with our success team and we would be happy to work with you. Whether that's 15 minutes or 30 minutes, whether you wanna talk about adding a hypothesis enabled assignment to Sakai or you wanna talk about implementation in your courses, we would love to talk with you. So do not hesitate, Becky and I are quite nice, we promise. Liquid Margins is our podcast style show where we work with instructors across disciplines on using social annotation in their discipline. Definitely take a look. I believe last week we did English and composition. Um, we've done that a few times. We've worked with instructors in math, the sciences, um, student success, research on social annotation, world languages, all of that. And my favorite part of this is that there are one minute clips for every show. So if you just want the quick best part of the show, you can click on the one minute part. And you can always send an email to us at the customer success team, success at hypothesis.is. That was quick. What kind of, I'm gonna stick around for questions. If you feel comfortable with everything that we just talked about, then by all means, take your 30 minutes back. I think it was 30 minutes. Um, and if you wanna stick around for questions for Becky and I, we are going to be here. So thanks for coming. Edgar, this is a great question. And I think I played with this with a school recently through Sakai. So it may work if that URL has been marked as a public URL. As in, if you've gone into Sakai, made it a URL, and then made sure that it's accessible without having to log into Sakai. Hopefully that makes sense. Thanks, Margaret. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thanks, Randall. So Edgar, what I would do, actually we'd love to hear from you whether that works or not. Um, if you could add a hypothesis enabled reading that way and see if you're able to launch it, then you'll know. Uh, so hopefully I'm not saying your name incorrectly. Is it Kearsley? Oh yeah, sure. Hi, thank you. Hi. That's fine. <laughs> no worries. So. I'm going to give you a little bit of technical explanation about the groups, Kearsley, um, and then I will explain the workaround as best as I can. Okay. So for those of you who didn't see, Kearsley asked about using hypothesis with smaller groups within one course. So I mentioned earlier that hypothesis assigns a URL to each document that you use with hypothesis because we don't host the document. If you were to assign a hypothesis enabled reading to multiple groups within one assignment, like you would say assign to group one, group two, group three, whatever, all of the groups are still gonna end up on the same document because it's reading from the same URL. The workaround, and I think Becky put it in the chat, but if she can put it back in the chat again, that'd be great. The workaround is to create a different digital fingerprint for the same PDF for the number of groups that you have. So let's say you have four groups within your class. You would create four different digital fingerprints of the same PDF. We have a tool that does that for you. Becky just put it in the chat. Once you create those four different digital fingerprints, you would assign each fingerprint to a different group. You essentially have to create four separate assignments as well. So it can make your gradebook a little messy. I'm gonna be completely honest about that. Um, you can maybe work on the gradebook end and erase some of that or whatever you need to do, but that would be the workaround. Kearsley, let me know if you, you want me to re-explain that if I didn't explain it in a nice way. Oh, no, uh, and I'm wondering, um, my TA Liz is on here so she can unmute too because she's been, we tried this last fall and it didn't work, okay. but that's because we were in beta mode um, oh. And it wasn't completely integrated into Sakai. And so we actually decided to just go and um, use your competitor actually in a public domain. Oh, program. never speak that name again. No, I'm just kidding. I know, I know. But now <laughs> that Duke's committed to you got to this and they've committed to supporting us inside Sakai, then we're going to do try it now. Um, Liz, if you're on. So we had thought about, you know, doing four different PDFs. Um, yeah. So I guess to, to clarify, would we have to like the students would see all, let's say, four versions and we would just have to tell them 
what group they're in and they would just have to make sure they're picking the correct version of that PDF, right? So Liz, this is going to be a little bit of my lack of knowledge about small groups within Sakai. Mm -hmm. um, so hang with me for a second. And if I'm incorrect here, you can correct me on this one. You would create a hypothesis enabled reading in Sakai with digital fingerprint one mm -hmm. as an assignment go through the whole process. And then I think you can have the option to assign it to a group. I've never successfully done that, okay. um, but yeah, I could definitely try. So what you may have to do is create it as four different assignments. And on assignment one, you would have to say, this is for this group in the title or something like that then. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we were going to try just the instructors and the TAs to do a little mini session ourselves and test this out. Okay. Can we also schedule, maybe Liz, you can schedule a call with um, a hypothesis to mm -hmm. have them walk you through this or. Yeah, I think let's try it out. Um, okay. I feel like it makes sense currently, but we'll have to try <laughs> it first. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I have to ask hypothesis why is this not easier because what instructor wants 30 students annotating the same document yeah and curiously i think that is a very um valid question and i would say that small groups is our number one requested feature from instructors i think it it's helpful hopefully to understand that we are an external tool working within the lms and so to some degree we are limited by how the lms will integrate with us Mm. Okay. And uh, I, I know that's like not a great answer. It's not a positive answer, um, but it's kind of what we have at this point. We are, we do know that groups is our number one requested piece. And so we are working diligently on figuring that out. The other honest answer to this, Kearsley, is that um, we work with all the LMSs. So Canvas, Blackboard, you probably heard of a bunch of them, right? Uh -huh. um, so we have to figure it out for every LMS. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> As you, and every LMS is, you know, different. Um, so that's what we're in the process of doing. Um, also figuring out how can we get the LMS to assign a different digital fingerprint for every group. Great. We, okay. Yeah. So there's some back end stuff there. Okay, thanks. So I think Liz and, and I and our co-instructors will try it ourselves and then if needed, Liz will schedule a call with you guys. Okay, that's totally great. And Liz, um, it depends if your issue is with Hypothesis or with Sakai itself. If the issue is with Hypothesis, then we can certainly help you. If the issue is with Sakai, then I think it's best to reach out to Duke OIT. And I think that Chris is here from Duke, so he might be able to answer that question as well. Hey, yeah, I'd be glad to. Um, I'd also love to join uh, whatever uh, session you end up setting up. Um, just to maybe give some pointers or offer any advice. Oh, perfect. Chris, thanks for that. Then we'll definitely loop you in yeah, for that thanks. session. Yeah. Yeah, we have a, a couple other people on our team who can also provide some support. So yeah, either um, OIT help or um, learning innovation. I posted a, a link there as well. So you can contact us either place. Great. Thank you. And Colin posted um, a way to edit for groups. So if you all want to take a look in the chat as well, um, I'd have to play with that within my own Sakai instance, Colin. But thank you so much. Much appreciated. More questions? I'm happy to stick around. Um, if you feel like you have everything you need, you can take off. And Becky and I are here. If you have more questions, you want to unmute yourself and just ask. Chris, thanks for coming. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hop off, but it sounds like you're getting some upswing in activity at Duke. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's been good. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, and it sounds like Becky's been really helpful as well, so. Yeah, sorry I ran a little late, but it looks like a lot of folks from Roger Williams, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
cool. Yeah, I didn't recognize some folks, so I just looked them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had, I think it was like half Roger Williams people. They were all uh, very quiet today. There wasn't a lot of banter. Or... Yeah. That's okay, though. Yeah, everyone's like, kind of getting on. I got to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give me the give me the deets. No, yeah. I'll follow up. Well, cool. Right. Thank you so much for your help. Yeah, thanks, Chris. I'm gonna go ahead and hop off. Take care. Bye.